Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to work on fractions and percent problems and give you some background on what's going on. So as we look at example one, we see that as a percent. Well, we want to convert this percent to, let's say, its decimal fraction form. And the rule is that this percent sign means that this is over 100. So we can think of this as 65 over 100. The percent, the two zeros, one zero there and one zero there, and there's the one. I don't know if that's really true, but it, it can be useful. And so now we want to convert it to a decimal. Well, if you read this, this is 65 hundredths. So the decimal form of this, and the shortcut way I often mention to students is when you take away the percent sign, your decimal is right there. You're going to move the decimal two places to the left. So this now becomes 0 0.65. And this would be the fractional form of 65%. And if you reduce that, you know, you can take a 5 out of each one. So this would be 13 twentieths. So there's the decimal form of 65%. And there's the fractional form. So in this one, then, let's change it to a decimal first. We're going to take away the percent sign. And we'll have to add a zero there, because our decimal's here. And we usually put another zero to fix where the decimal is. Now, to convert this to a regular fraction, how many zeros or how many places do we have here in its decimal form? Well, one, two, three, four. So you will need four zeros and a one. And just put this up on top. Now, you can start taking uh, a 5 out of here, and I brought my calculator along. So 925 divided by 5 that's going to be 185. So I could, well actually as I look at this I can take a 25 out of there. So let's try that. 925 divided by 25. All right, that's going to be 37. And out of 10,000, that's going to be 400. Now, this one's a little tricky because the one-third we know is going to be a repeating fraction, 0.333. So we can think of this as 14.3 with a bar over it. And we're going to put it in its decimal form by moving the decimal two places to the left, fix it with a zero, and if you're rounding it off to the nearest tenth, then that's what it would look like. But now to put it into a fraction form, that's a little more challenging. In fact, I will work it out for you because it takes a while, and I'll get back.
So the basic procedure is to convert this in, uh, mixed number to an improper fraction. So it becomes 3 times 14, which is 42, add 1, gives you 43 over 3. And remember, we said that this is over 100. So I put it over 100. And I made it sort of in the form of a division of fractions example. So there's my top fraction. I'm going to change this division bar to multiplication. Take the reciprocal of this, which makes it 1 over 100. And then I multiply through, and there's my answer. So this one's a little tricky, but this is the procedure. When you have something like this, again, converting it to a decimal fraction is pretty easy. Uh, here again, our decimal points there, so that becomes a one-third is a point three with a repeating bar over it. Move the decimal place two places to the left. And then to convert it into its fractional form, we had to go through this procedure. All right, this one, we want now to convert this fraction to a percent. And we can do so by just taking our calculator and dividing 4 divided by 6. And that gives us the repeating decimal. And it just keeps repeating. So that would be the decimal form. So the percent form then would be moving it over two places. You can write this as either two thirds percent or put a dot there and six with a repeating bar over the over the six. Number five is pretty straightforward. It's in decimal form. To convert it to percent, it would just move the decimal two places to the right, add a percent sign. And of course, if you wanted this in its fractional form, this would be 5 over 100, which is 1 over 20. In this case, uh, 5 over 9, 5 divided by 9 is 0 0.555 repeated. To put it in percent form, move our decimal over. This would then be 55. 0.5 fraction bar repeating, and these are our first few. All right, in these next few, we're asked to translate, that is, convert from English into algebra and then solve it. And there's just a few types of problems that if you know how to do the conversion okay, then you can't go wrong. So that's what I'm going to try to stress here. 70% of 410 is what number? Well, these are shorts. So you don't have to read it too much but you need to understand what's going on. So we convert the 70% into a decimal fraction. The word of translates into multiplication. Is translates into an equation or equal sign. And then what number? We can use the letter N. 
So that's the basic equation for number seven. What is 75.5% of this? And you might say, well, that's just an arithmetic problem. Well, mostly. But you could make it an algebra problem by saying, what, that's your number, n, is, equal sign, convert this to a percent, and the one-half becomes a five. Of is still multiplication. And there's, in a sense, a very simple equation. For number nine, is, is an equal sign, 61% converted to a percent, a uh, decimal, of multiplication, and since we're multiplying, we don't have to have, we could put parentheses, but it's not needed because no symbol between a letter and a number implies multiplication. So what we've done is we've translated, and now we're going to solve. And you can use your calculators. So here it's just 0.70. Oh, let's turn it on first. Times 410, 287. And then here it's just this times that. So n equals 6500.55. And notice, again, it's 75% of this. That's, that's about right. You often have to look and see, did you get a reasonable answer? And these are reasonable. Now, for this one, in order to find out what n is, we have to divide both sides by 0.61. Now, normally I would say get rid of decimals, but not here. You're using your calculator. So this cancels out nicely. And we just have to do this. 51.85 divided by 0.61 gives you n equals 85. So for number 10, what percent of 88 is 22? Again, setting it up as an equation is once you master it, you'll always get the right answer. So what percent, we don't know that, that'll be P, of 88, we're going to multiply by 88, of implies multiplication, is, is an equal sign, 22. And there's a formula and an equation. You're going to solve it for P. Here, Mary earns $340 a week, and 25% of this is withheld for taxes and Social Security and other things. So how much is withheld? Well, this is straightforward. So 340 times 25%, you could have put it in the front, or here is okay is the amount withheld. So again, these are simple, 
But uh, the idea of setting it up in an equation, I think, is very useful. So to solve this, we're just going to divide both sides by 88. And we get P equals 22 divided by 88 comes out as 0 0.25. Again, this is a decimal fraction, and they're looking for percent. So we have to convert this to a percent by moving the decimal place over two places to the right and adding a percent sign. So our answer is 25%. Again, it comes out as a decimal fraction from the calculation, but then you have to convert it to a percent. And for this, we're just going to take 25% of this And the amount withheld is $85. Okay, on uh, this one, we're talking about a football player who makes this many field goals out of this many attempts. What is his percent of success in kicking? Okay, well, it's basically a ratio of 659 divided by 1018. This will give you the percent. So it's, well, we'll solve it in a minute. Uh, sales tax of 6%. How much sales tax does someone pay if they buy four telephones at this much each? So basically it's going to be 6% of the product of 4 times 39. This will give you the sales tax. So again, some of these problems are very basic, but uh, hopefully by getting some basic equations set up and a strategy for solving them, this will be useful. So 659 now, divided by 1018 gives you 0 0.647, I'm rounding it off to the nearest tenth. So when I convert this to a percent, move the decimal place over, and it will be a success rate of 64.7%. In this one, I'd have to multiply this first. 4 times 39 gives you 156 times 0 And I get uh, nine dollars and thirty six cents. That would be the tax. And then if I were to add these two together, that would give us what we'd have to pay at the register. So this plus one fifty six. You're going to pay at the register 165.36. And again, I didn't write all the problem out. I kind of summarized it, so we keep the writing down. Okay, these will be our last two. 
It says, during a sale, a dress is decreased in price from $90 to $63. What was the percent of decrease? Now, for this type of problem, whether it's decrease or increase, it works pretty much the same. And what you need to do is see the actual amount of difference. So you would do some preliminary, $90 minus 63 will give you uh, 27. Let's see, put that right there. So it's a decrease in $27. Now the way to solve increase or decrease, you find the difference in what had happened, and then put the difference over the original price. And that'll give you what your percent of decrease would be. So once again, you went from a larger amount to a lesser amount, so that's a decrease. If it were an increase, it worked the same way. You would still subtract it to find out the amount of increase or decrease, but then you put that over the original price. And we'll do that calculation in a moment. Now here, a mutual fund dropped by 30% from last year's price. The fund is now worth $12,495. What was the fund worth last year before it lost that 30%? Well, let's say that fund was worth N last year. That was the amount it was worth last year. And that is going to equal this year. But what amount of that fund does this represent? Well, we know it was 30% less. So what was the percent of this year's at this amount? And uh, once again, let's say this is 100%, and we're going to take off 30%. What's left? Well, up here it's 70%. So this is actually 70% of last year's cost or what that fund was worth. So if we take 70% of this, it will give us what it's worth, which is this year. So this is last year's cost or amount. 70% of that is what it's here because we lost 30%. And that's what we need to find out. So we're going to solve, let's start with this one, by dividing both sides by 0.70. And when we do that, I happen to have these worked out already, it's going to be 17850. And you can put that in your calculator and check it. And for number 14, when we put this in our calculator, it comes out to 0.30. And again, they want a percent, so we have to move the decimal place over, and add a percent sign. And that wraps this up.